went into courtroom and was up to testify. His attorney asked him, when these people broke through to the studio, and his next line was, well, actually, we invited them into the studio. So we were not found guilty of trespassing, thanks to Walter Cronkite. Wow. I'm looking around the room. Marlene, are you here? I don't see you. Uh, we were supposed to have a special guest, but she's not here. So let me just go on and say, there's a reason I was able to do that, a very strong reason. That was 1973. But when I was 18 years old, and yes, at one time I was 18, um, I left home in Philadelphia, came to New York on May 10th, 1969, six weeks before a very famous date, uh, which was something called, that we now call Stonewall. I was lucky enough to be there as part of, I was there just having a night out, but I was also a member of a group called the Action Group. And there are only two of us alive today that are from the Action Group, and one of my other buddies from the Action Group is still here. Mike Levery. Mike, put your hand up. Now, we had one pivotal thing that we ever did. The Action Group only did one thing in its entire existence, but it was important. That night, Marty Robinson gave us each chalk, and we were told to go up and down the streets and write, tomorrow night Stonewall. That's all. Um, we did. But what that did was create the second, third, and fourth night to Stonewall, which did something more important than even Stonewall. It created the first organization from the ashes of Stonewall called Gay Liberation Front. <laughs> Gay Liberation Front did something that no other organization in the history of the world ever did. Its goal was first to define ourselves for the first time we were going to define ourselves. And second, and I think more importantly, we came up with an idea which was revolutionary. We were going to create a community for LGBT people. Before then, there were the bars, places where gay people met secretly, and private parties. That was it. We, in one year, I want to make this very clear, in one year, we created the first gay youth organization first trans organization, first gay medical alerts, first gay community center, and to top it all off the end of the year, along with Craig Rodwell, who organized it, we helped create the first gay pride day. How's that for one year? So, <laughs> so, if I may, I have one of my Gay Liberation Front brothers here with me today. Um, and he, by the way, has been a godsend during this whole project. I sent him pieces and I go, does this work? Does it not? Um, and he's been extremely honest with me. Ladies and gentlemen, please, please meet my good friend, my brother, Perry. Perry, please stand up. first year, I got an opportunity, Perry and my other brothers and sisters gave me an opportunity to learn. I learned how, believe it or not, to be a leader. And one of the things I did was create gay youth. And uh, this I might cry at. So here joining us today from that very first year of gay youth, and please stand, Michael Knowles. here today if you haven't figured that out yet which is what I what the book to me celebrates is our mutual history it's not about me it's about us and what we built and that's really important and LGBT history if you haven't figured out by now is important to me and we have some very important people in this room today who have chronicled that history very important pe people Jonathan Ned Katz gay American history if you haven't read it 
Let me tell you, that book can tell you an incredible amount of history throughout the, from the beginning of this uh, nation. Alexander uh, Hamilton? Yeah. <laughs> Go see it on Broadway right now. You got me tickets. David Carter, who has one of the best books on Stonewall. David, where are you? He's You're here, here somewhere. Yeah. He was here. <laughs> oh, okay. Oh, he's hiding back there. David, you don't need to hide. Uh, so. The book which you've heard a lot about, and I'm not going to talk long because I want to eat and I want to drink and I want to talk to all of you and I want to sign some books. Good. But I have some thank yous, some very important thank yous. Uh, first off, yeah, I don't need that. Um, at one point during the book, it, it says in the uh, acknowledgments that many times during the book, I wasn't going to publish it. Uh, for those of you who are in the book business, you know, you write a book, you don't read it as you're going along, you write, 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 and then you send it off to the publisher, they do a first edit, send it back to you, it's the first time you read it. Well, I read it, and my reaction to it after reading it the first time was, uh, I said to Jason, Jason, we're not publishing this. <laughs> and Jason said, why? And I said, no one's going to believe all this. Um, and so uh, I sent it back to my, my publishers, and their reaction was, well, let's get you an editor and let them be the judge. Um, they sent me to a man by the name of Michael Dennehy. Yeah. Anybody know that name? Yeah. Very famous in publishing. Of course, I didn't know who he was, and of course, I had to Google him. So for those of you who don't know who he is, uh, Michael is very well known for St. Martin's Press, of course, but he also uh, edited another book which was very important to me in this process, which was um, The Mayor of Castro Street, uh, the Life and Times of Harvey Milk. Mm -hmm. And so they sent it off to him, and I bit my nails for six weeks until I heard from him. And Michael uh, came up and said to me, very nice, I'm looking directly at Michael now. Um, he said, this is a book that has to be published, and it's a good story. Michael, thank you for sending me on a road. Which I'm Stand up, Michael. So before Michael, you